would like to use the clicker, <laughs> and then I would like to catch red conditions in this CVD. Uh, these conditions are hard to deal with and they cause a lot of pain in our system. Let's see a complete example. So here we have a client process that wants to set up communication with the server here. In order to avoid blocking uh, during this setup, the client spawns a client helper. And the client helper in turn responds server helper process remotely on the server processing node. Which after some preparation will do a gen server port to the server and get back some data which is passed back via this intermediary to the original client. Then the setup is concluded by sending an acknowledgement from the client to the server and the server helper, and they can start communicating. <coughs> it's quite simple on code, uh, the only non trivial bit is in the server. So uh, once it sends back uh, the. Uh, you know, that's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. When, when, uh, when it sends back the data, it shall block until it receives acknowledgement. Otherwise, if it handles a different request, data may become. Uh, but uh, errors can happen, so it monitors the other processes involved, and if they would die with an error, then they consider the, uh, the setup of failure. I don't know whether you can spot here, yeah, you can spot here because I click the actual race condition, but this was something that actually was called the view, it was in production for two years, and run twice a day until it actually hit us. Uh, and the bug is that once the data is sent, the reply is sent, the client helper can terminate any time normally. Uh, and if it happens to terminate before we place the monitoring, the server will immediately receive the dumb message here with the reason no problem, and consider the successful setup of the protocol failure. Luckily for the Adam community, nowadays we have a tool that would catch these kind of race conditions. It's called Conky error. Except it doesn't support concurrency. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't support distribution, so if the server is on different mode, it doesn't do that. For those of you who are not familiar with Conqueror, it will run your test case, recognize all the interesting race conditions in them, and then run it again in different scheduling, trying to uh, play the races of the other way around, and then verifies that your assumptions still hold. Uh, we are Victoria and Daniel from Karna. We work in a team responsible for the stability and scalability fed, the platform covering the European business of Karna. And we use Amnesium in a single node mode behind our custom replication uh, called KEP. We want to make modifications to KEP a lot. But at the same time, we don't want to introduce any more bugs to today's conditions. We want to use Conky error to test our code for this reason. So uh, we implemented a lag rate that allows us to model distributed error within a single node and therefore use computer. Uh, in this presentation, in the first half, I will talk about how our library looks like and how it works, and then Victoria will show you an actual use case of how uh, it can be uh, used for uh, testing. So our library is called DNAP, open source available on uh, GitHub. Our design goals with B-Network, first of all, to work together with Conqueror. Um, we could have also modified Conqueror and prepared it to deal with a distributed error natively, but that would have been a lot, of, lot more effort than writing this uh, Then, uh, we understand that both Conqueror and our simulator will have their limits, uh, so we don't expect all production code to be able to run under these tools unmodified. Still, we want to minimize the difference between the testable models and the actual code you want to run in collection. At the very minimum, all the OTP behavior can uh, uh, friends shall work on modified model. And finally, this will get testing tools, so it should uh, support generating uh, easily and conveniently interesting events like node crashes or uh, network splits. If you want to simulate distributed error, then you, uh, then you inevitably have to modify the semantics of some of the distribution primitives. So for example, here you, you have a spawn uh, that if you leave it untouched, the start the process and remove You don't want to do this uh, in our scenario. And depending on how do you model the, uh, the remote processes, you may also have to modify the way message sending or monitoring. 
You could do this by two ways. First of all, you can use a modified version of the Erdem runtime system, which is not really feasible, or uh, a common approach is to recompile the code and at the same time swap these primitives with your custom implementation. Conky error already does this, so we cannot go on the same route, otherwise it would cause complexity. A completely different approach would be to force the developer to use, instead of the built-in uh, primitives, your own uh, module, like SIMD here. This is easy to implement. The problem is that the code you can test will be very much different from the code you will use in production. No, none of the ODP behaviors work on modified because they already rely on the native primitives. So in VNet, we use a hybrid approach. Sometimes you have to go to VNet and use VNet's version instead of the built-in one. So for example, instead of spawning process natively on a remote process, uh, remote node, you can do a VNet RPC. But once that's done, monitoring message processing shall work with the native primitives. This table summarizes which primitives we have implemented uh, in VNet and uh, whether you can use the native versions or whether you have to go through the VNet code. The guiding principle here is that whatever is needed by the ODP behaviors <laughs> must work natively. There are, of course, a large number of other primitives that we haven't uh, implemented that won't work out of the box, like metal and ping. The reason for that is mostly that we haven't yet seen a use case for those in the Most of them could be possible to support. So how would, this is all nice, how does it work, actually? Uh, Minet has two main components. First of all, the easy one, that it provides you uh, name registry that you can use with the via tuples in, uh, in uh, gen servers and other behaviors. But the bulk of the work, uh, bulk of the simulation is implemented by adding some uh, system processes. Here uh, on this image you can see two virtual nodes, N1 and N2. And the pink dots here are the ordinary, ordinary user processes running for those. And uh, the purple dots here are the system processes added by VNet under top level VNet supervisor. They have here VNode processes, connection processes, and proxy processes. Let's see what they do on them. So first we have the VNode processes. The purpose of them is to group together processes running on VNode. Uh, they are not supervisors, they are group leaders. This is basically the same trick that all the applications use. The group leader of the process identifies where they really belong to. Uh, and it's inherited on spawn, so it's very convenient. We can use local spawning and uh, uh, you can use native spawn for locally spawning processes, and they will still belong to the same thing. Uh, the other beauty of these VNode you know, processes is to perform no start and stop operations. Stopping, for example, means cleaning all the processes on the way. Then we have the proxy processes. This is the core concept in uh, The idea is that process, uh, process running on one VNode shall never directly get the feed of a process running on, a, on an other VNode. You can only see the feed of a proxy process for the process. Why do, you want, uh, why do we need these proxies? The main reason is to be able to simulate netspace. Uh, this is best explained, I think, via an example. Let's see how process A on you know, N1 makes a gen server for process B on N2. First thing that happens is we need, if we need to resolve the name B on N2. Uh, and VNet knows that it belongs to the B005, but it also knows that it's on a different feed mode than the calling one. So it cannot return this feed. It will create a proxy, uh, proxy process instead, which, by the way, gets a very long and descriptive name. But the important thing is that it has a feed 0010, and this is what A will see. Then A will monitor this proxy process, and it will send a gen call message to it, which includes its own, uh, own bit 004. The proxy receives this message, and it looks, for, looks through the message for bits and rewrites them. It recognizes that 004 is a bit of a process on a remote window, so it will start a proxy for it and put it into the message. So at the end, the proxy will send a modified gen core containing the bit of A's proxy uh, to the real process B. So when process B wants to respond, it will uh, send, a, send a response to this uh, proxy. But even more importantly, if 
we will introduce a method here, then this monitor that A created shall trigger. And, uh, and this is easy to do because all we have to do at the moment is just to kill the proxy process increase in no uh, connection. If we wouldn't have a proxy in place, we would have to kill somehow process B. But that's not good because it's only a network. Thing. The real process is on uh, the node shall keep running. So I hope that at this point it's becoming uh, easy to understand why we need the process. Finally, we have the connection processes, one bad pair of people. Uh, this is, these are only responsible for managing the process, starting them on demand and uh, stopping them when uh, it's in the network. So, uh, em uh, simulators are never emulators. Uh, they always have some limit after which they break down and they are no longer accurate. Vnet is no exception. The biggest limitation is that exit signals, they speed messages. So if B wants to send a message to A, it will go through your A's proxy. But if B exits, the exit signal will reach B's proxy process, and from there, we we'll get to A if we A plays the monitor. Uh, this means that if you run this test on the Conkey error, Conkey error will, uh, will have a chance of exploring scheduling that can only happen under VMAP, where the down message arrives before the lost message from B. Uh, but if your tests fail under these scheduling, they are only false positives. Luckily, false negatives cannot happen. So all the scheduling that are possible on a real airlock distributed network will be explored by uh, a And also, usually, it's uh, easy to work around this problem by simply discarding messages that arrive after the uh, exit signal. We try to, uh, it would be nice to improve on it, but it's unfortunately impossible under these uh, limitations we are working. Uh, it would be only possible to group both exit signals and messages through the, through the same proxy if you would introduce a proxy between every single pair of processes, which is too much and would make it impossible to use native spawning even on the local. Some other limitations include uh, that if you really try, you can bypass the feature uh, write down by proxies. You can hide bits conveniently, for example, in three, uh, three arguments of funds or use external transformers. Uh, ETS tables, whatever. Um, another interesting thing is that the visit copy of the remote process may change over its lifetime. If you disconnect two nodes uh, from each other, then the proxy process may be killed. But if you restore the connection data, a new proxy may be spawned for the same process on the remote, but with a different one. And finally, uh, the group leader is used by VNet, so you cannot use it on your uh, for any other purposes, you cannot start ODP applications on VNodes. But what you can do instead is start uh, uh, supervisor trees directly. That was all about the recovery. Let's see how it works in practice. Yeah, thank you. So for the for the sake of the example, we picked a very basic system. So it's a toy system. This is a let's say we have three nodes: a server node, a good client, and a bad client. So the server node main, maintains a counter, this shouldn't be monotonically increasing, and uh, it should survive crashes. So um, the client, it has one API uh, that the clients can use to, to uh, increase the value of the counter and get back the, the, the current value. Now the, this is hosted on Wonderland mode, and, and if you have a supervised gen server, and then we will have a, a good client that will respect the, the API of the server. And we will have a bad client that will uh, miserably crash our server. So let's see how to implement this. So first you, we would write a supervisor where we would use... Okay, so it's not this. Aha, uh -huh, great. So where we would use the... the the name registry of Erlang, so we will register the supervisor as a local process and we will register the server as a local process as well on the node and so we will maintain the state of the counter in an ETS table and then to survive the crash of the server we will uh, initialize the table in the supervisor process so it will belong to the supervisor. Now the, the server so 
it is, as said, it's a Jam server. It registers itself under the under the name that the supervisor passed it to. Then it's the, uh, it saves the, the table. <coughs> so then later it can access it. It implements one API module, uh, API function, sorry, which will be the request. So if we request an increment, then this will be handled in the handle call callback. It will update the counter and reply back with the, with the new state of the counter. Every other calls towards the server will crash the server. So, the client. Since the clients are hosted on, on the mother long node, there can be two ways to communicate with the server. So the good client chose uh, to use a remote procedure calls towards the, the server node, and, uh, and the bad client uses uh, distributed their long name, regi uh, name register service. Good. So now it's time to add VNet to the model. What we need to change. So we need to use the name registry service that VNet provides. And we need to use the, the table service that VNet provides. This is to avoid name uh, Yeah, to have unique names assigned to the ETS tables. So this is what we need to change in the supervisor. Now in the server, we don't need to change anything. So the good plan, RPC calls will not work because now we want to RPC to the, to the virtual code. So we need to use VNet RPC, which is a synchronous call towards the uh, VNode. And then we can pass as well the, uh, the MFA. And as, again, we need to use the, the name register service that we not provide. So, in case of the bad plan, we just need to change again the the name discovery, the process discovery, to use VNet. Okay, now we changed everything in the code. This was not a big deal, I think. So now we can start writing tests. So we want to start three nodes. This is how we can do this. So we list the names of the nodes as a list, and then we pass it to be as starting. Then we need to start the supervisor and the gen server. So like process three on the on the server node, we can do it by calling binat RPC on the server we node, and then running an MFA. And this uh, setup server function will start the supervisor. Then we can start client. So we start a, a valid client, so we start a good client, and we start a bad client. You can notice that we are using spawn VNet RPC. So what it does is that it RPCs to the VNode, and then there we will uh, spawn a new process that will execute the MFA. With this trick, we achieve uh, asynchronous. Uh, we achieve that the two clients will run together uh, at the same time. And since we use concu error, we can be sure that there will be one execution pause where the good client will run first and then the bad client follows. And there will be another one where first the bad client will uh, do the request, crash the server, and then we run the good client. Now we have the setup. How can we test it? So we should use uh, we should test invariant progress properties. What we usually test with the uh, here. So we can use e unit to observe these properties, and and then we can of course use here as well to to explore all possible statements. So here, what you can see is the is the test that we run with this toy system. The, the difference that you should uh, notice is the proxy versus RPC. So the proxy uh, processes, which is the, when we use the, the VNet provided name discovery to talk to a remote process, has more interlinks. But this reflects the reality. So it's 
between. Now, we tested uh, VNet with this toy example, but we use VNet to test our big distributed model. It really helped us to to uh, discover conference blocks and, and help us to give us bigger confidence. <laughs> so our lesson learned was that it was a good, very good idea to to do rapid prototyping, to do early verification. With VNet and Comparer, we have much higher confidence that, that our model will work live. And since the, the test code and the production code is, uh, is very close, then we have a very short gap, right? That, that is much easier to bridge. So we would like to encourage you to do the same. And VNet is available, uh, it's open source. Uh, please try it out. And messages with these proxy buses earlier, for example, when the exit, exit signal was arrived out of order. <coughs> why can you not, perhaps I'm missing it, why can you not sort of what, model it without proxy processes so you have sort of, for each V node you have like a process which is responsible for communicating with other V nodes, so it's more emulate the way that two OTP, two allied nodes communicate for betting. Why is it more ad hoc rather than centralized? So, that means that so if, if all the processes would send the message, sorry, uh, what you suggest means that the all processes on uh, the web uh, this one. So here we have a bunch of processes on this one. If they would all communicate via single proxy, that means that from here, if one <coughs> send a message to you, any of them, they would, this would all go to the same proxy, basically. And that's a problem, so the, the proxy cannot uh, be a proxy for multiple, uh, multiple processes, because then if you receive a message, who do you want to forward it? It doesn't contain a, a recipient. Address. Also, a proxy cannot, um, um, yeah, so this is the main reason. You need a bomb proxy pad and that process on V. And uh, yeah. And we need these processes because uh, because of the monitors. Uh, if this process would place a monitor on this process directly and we would break the connection, then we would somehow have to remove this monitor, which is impossible. Only the process placing monitor uh, on another process can uh, call the monitor. And we cannot really change the code running on this process. So we cannot say, okay, now we are simulating an event, please the monitor everything, and instead put a, a dumb message in the real using proxies solve this. Before we take next question, can Wolfgang or uh, Jorgen So I was wondering, couldn't you propagate exit processes? Exit signals through processes that have a higher priority, and then Google presumably always deliver those before they work. Yes, the compiler um, doesn't count the both uh, priorities, so it's, it simply ignores it. Uh, having a higher priority doesn't mean that you can actually always process your messages before that. That's it. The compression is um, Very nice presentation. It's very thoughtful. Um, so I, I guess the, I, I want to go back to the same minute at the beginning. You said uh, you said you know we're trying to test race conditions, right? And so uh, can you go to your experimental table for a second? The, the table that's like a slide ahead. Of the no, the one with the results. That's oh. not good. So when you when you run this thing, you you show that when you introduce the VNet, you're adding you're adding this latency, right? So the obvious question is like, oh I uh, oh I slowed down the system. So what what class of race conditions am I not finding now because of is this compare results? results? Yes, this is compare results. And these, these, are, these aren't latency timings yeah. in the usual sense. This is output from compare. So yeah. what is this time cost? So this is not clear to me. What yeah, is so this, this time cost? Uh, this total column says how many different schedulings compare or explore. 
And this has all okay, so I cor oh, okay, that's all right. So I correlated that completely differently, but I think my question still stands, however. So not counting this, presumably the addition of the Vina the VNet proxy changes the behavior of the application by slowing it down, right? No. Uh, so Comparer doesn't use uh, real-time calls. It simply discards them. If, if you record, uh, so if you run your code under its own scheduler, so it will know that, okay, now say process A and B, send a message to C, and first time maybe it played out that A is message arrived first. Oh, so it's just then, changing the order. And then yeah, it's replay the thing that plays uh, message uh, from B to arrive first, and then the message from A. It doesn't add any latency. The time you see here is actually how long it takes to iterate over all the possible yeah, like um, at Codebeam, the, the paper that Costas had referred to that I had helped with, that we, I mean, we had a we had a runtime for Conqueror that was over a week. So I mean, that that sort of timing. So I understand. Is, so this is like the timing for the execution of all the schedules, yeah, exactly. all the schedules that exploits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And basically, this time is, I think it's quadratic to the amount of events you have. Uh, so because Conqueror needs to find those that have... Well, it's pretty, I mean, presumably it has to compute the product of like all the, I mean, the power set of the schedules or whatever, right? Like of all the events. So uh, that grows with every message yes. you send. Yes, yes, the, the, the how long your sequential code is executing and how many reasons. Okay, thank you. And I have to ask you to take further questions offline. Let's go. Let's speakers.